Hello and welcome to the $1,169 2v2 DEFCON 2 tournament. And here we are in the grand finals. This is a best of three between Team uh, Spartan System, which has NBK and um, NATO Boy, calls himself Jesse on Discord. And they're up against uh, Menkar calls himself Menkar on Discord, and Stanag, who calls himself Stanag on Discord, aka Winchester. <laughs> Don't know what that means. And uh, yeah, if you've not watched it already, you should watch the uh, the hype trailer. Uh, first link in the description. Sadly, can't show it on the live stream uh, for uh, for reasons. And uh, yeah, we gave them we gave them like half an hour to get ready, but they're still not ready. Uh, but we'll go through the draft. We'll go through the draft. So the maps are Triple Strike, Volcano, and Airport. So let's have a look at Triple Strike. Uh, just getting into the game here. How are we all today? Hello, hello. Oh, I forgot to put the uh, the chat up, so that should now be up. And we've got uh, Triple Strike. Actually classed as a three-player map. Um, let's have a look at this. And this is Triple Strike. So you've got three avenues of attack, <laughs> hence the name. This one is quite claustrophobic. Tends to favour airborne infantry-centric divisions. It's always good to get some guys around the forests. Um, and then the middle point, it's a bit of a mixed bag, because they'll be fighting over Fedor mostly. And you see that there's a mix of, uh, I always lag on this map. Do you guys lag on this map? They might not have seen the trailer. They can complain about what they want. Um, I'm not representing more. Yes, I'm representing myself. <laughs> um, so yes, we got Fedor here. And that tends to favor, you know, some more close range engagement. Something like 8th Infantry would be really good here with the M1A ones. Um, but yeah, shorter range engagements here. Actually, something with T55As could be good here. Something with T72s could be good here because the, the engagements are not max range. Looks like Operation Chromite from Wargame Red Dragon. Fair enough. I mean, it's the same company. I've not played uh, that map or I might have done. I might have done. And then the right side is really sort of tank heavy central, nice and open, really nice and open. But there's such a big gap between these two zones that it's very difficult to push across here. So you can expect most of the fighting to be here. Now moving to the uh the draft. The draft. We've got um guys that don't know what Danger Hills is, but basically so in the draft team one. Uh, is Menkar and Stanag, and they choose to play as NATO or Pact, and they picked Pact. So they chose to play Pact in the first game, and then Team 2 bans two divisions from Pact, and they banned 35YA and 27Y. So they've banned one forward deployment division and the uh, the heavy tank division, one T-80BV division. Then Team 1 selects two divisions and bans two divisions, and they choose 39Y and 79Y, so they've gone all in on the T-80BVs. Hippie is my wife's boyfriend, based. And they banned 82nd and 3rd US. And uh, and then NBK and NATO boy picked 11 easy and 11 cav. So that's going to be cool. Just going in game, we'll see if they've actually got in game yet. We'll see if they've actually got in game yet. They're not, they're still in the lobby. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's we're just we're just waiting for them to start. We'll get some text on the go. Um, that's that's not the right one. Can I duplicate that? No, I need to add a new text. I need to add uh, add some text here. Um, whoa, what's that? Add text. Just waiting for game to start. And. Uh, and the font, we don't want Arial because Arial's for losers. If you read sans serif fonts, if you read serif fonts, you're a loser. I like uh, Cambria Bold. 
Cambria Math Bold. Oh, no, that doesn't have a bold. Cambria Bold is a, is a good one. Just waiting for game to game one to start. And there we go. So we're just waiting for game one to start, <laughs> as you might have gathered. And we'll check the chat. We'll do some chat checking here. How are we all today? We did a poll. Vote in the poll if you haven't already. If you're on mobile, you can't vote in the poll. Um, we said who would win? Boss of the gym, Menkar and Stanag, or Spartan System with NBK and NATO boy? And out of 84 of you, 43% um, of you voted Boss of the Gym, and 57% of you voted NBK and NATO boy. Interesting, interesting. So, yeah, let's have a think. We can look at some older games while we're waiting for... Ah, there we go. They're in lobby now. We're, they're still not in-game. But they're in lobby. So once we get in-game, we got to wait five minutes. Tempted to launch some Heli Attack 3 while we wait, because they're not even in-game yet. Because um, you see the... Uh... What the hell is it? So what is it on Triple Strike? It's weird because it says that I can join this lobby, so I'm not. That means that they've not started. But I don't see anything here on Triple Strike apart from the 10v10, which doesn't count. Um, interesting. Very exciting. Very exciting. So, how are we all today? Are we all hyped, ready, and waiting for the the grand final? The grand final. Wives BF reveal when? <laughs> what the hell is daylight savings, mate? You call yourself Deutschland Empire. Britain invented time, right? And then Germany invented daylight savings time. I'm not joking. They invented it in World War I. Enlighten us about the divisional choices. No, it's better to talk about daylight savings time. Who invented? Wait, what? No, it was Germany. It was Germany in World War I. Wasn't that guy? There you go. Germany embraced daylight savings time to conserve electricity. Um, and they were the first country to do so. So there you go. We're going to go on history.com here. Germany was the first country to enact daylight savings time. And basically the reason for it is to try and save fuel by having less time. Whoa, what is that? Um, less time when the sun isn't shining in the typical workday. So you have to burn less fuel. But daylight savings time kills people. I don't know if you know about this. Um, deaths due to daylight savings time. Here we go. Here we go. This is the British Medical Journal, one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world. And we just go to the abstract. Oh, that's not a very good abstract. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, I'm trying to find the answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it doesn't kill people. Oh, so that must just be a myth. It was found to affect mortality patterns in the US. But the additional deaths overall were not found. Okay, so if you're going to die next week and it's daylight savings time starts, you might die a week early, basically. I think that's what they're basically saying there. Are they in game yet? They're in game. They're in game. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Running games. Uh, filter out empty servers. Uh, gym versus Spartan in deployment, great. So we'll get to the end. The first thing we need to do is wait five minutes. So after 40 seconds, we need to wait five minutes because they've requested a five minute delay. And then we add to that the two minute delay, which the game automatically brings in. And that takes us to a seven minute delay. And these teams have requested this. So that's what we have to do. So we got to kill five minutes somehow. Um, well, let's find out what this says. Let's put that in the old Google Translate. And uh, and he said uh, he said Yuru fun rufmu yut. So there you go, there you go. Um, I'm not sure. It doesn't it's not any different in Ukrainian. So that 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 was interesting. Uh, <laughs> really glad we learned about that. Um, and yeah, um, I'm sorry to hear that. So, right, so the game has started, but we need to wait five minutes now without giving away the deployment. Um, 
so uh, so we'll just look at the the horizon and we'll play some heli attack three and we'll read some chat we're just waiting five minutes just waiting five minutes uh let me um you just typed english with russian turned on oh fair enough uh so i'm just setting a five minute timer um on my watch what might be the reasons for Menkar's apparent disfavor towards me? <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Give me a copium. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. So um, so maybe that's enough chat for one day. Let's play some uh, Heli Attack 3 while we wait. Let's play some Heli Attack 3, do a little bit of Heli Attack 3. Hopefully my PC doesn't crash. And uh, yeah, we're just waiting, just waiting on the Heli Attack 3 loading screen. Any second now. That's weird. Usually it's like immediate. There we go. That was a bit loud. I do apologize. I heard my headphones vibrate from that. <laughs> so we're just going to zoom in a bit and we're just waiting for game one to start uh, with a five minute delay. And then we'll play it in real time. So I do love a bit of heli attack. Do love a bit of heli attack. Don't they trust the players? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's not a lot of, uh, there's a lot of bad blood between these two teams, basically. I don't know if you know about that. Um, we won't get into the reasons why, but if you've seen the hype trailer, you might, <laughs> you might begin to understand. Um, but yeah, let, let's not get into the reasons why. Uh, actually, let's get into the reasons why. So basically, Menkar and Stanag are both Ukrainian. And on the other side, NBK is Ukrainian, and NATO boy is Belarusian, to my knowledge. And so, as you might know, there's something of a of a big uh, throwdown in that part of the world. I don't know if you've noticed. You may have noticed that. And um, basically, Menkar and Stanag see NBK as a traitor because he takes donations from Russians on his live streams. So they think he's like a traitor to the nation. So these guys really don't get along very much, um, and uh, and yeah, there's a lot of a uh, lot of bad blood, a lot of bad blood uh, between these two teams. And of course, as the conflict heats up, um, you know they're probably not big fans of people from Belarus either. <laughs> um, and uh, as the conflict heats up, people's emotions tend to get uh, tend to get stronger. Um, so that that's basically the whole thing. Um, the thing about uh, wait, what? I don't understand why that happens. I just I just got hit by Mossad. I guess I don't know. He may have been. How do we make East German divs not shit? Both is good actually. Um, I would just nerf the OP divs. I don't think there's anything wrong with the East German divs, it's just the OP divs are really OP. The decision to buff the M1A1 was definitely one of the decisions of all time. Really definitely one of the decisions of, of all time to buff the M1A1. You know, I've just realized something, which is that when we get in game after waiting our five minutes, we, uh, we will then have to sit through the deployment. What the hell is time sync? Okay, everything is green, I guess. No, I don't believe in buffing these divs. I think they should just nerf the OP divs. So make the M1A1 and the T80BV not OP. And uh, and that will solve most of the problems. Uh, but yeah, we're just waiting. We've got 1 minute 19 left. Um, I do apologize for the wait. I started the stream late for that reason uh, <laughs> but they they took a long time to figure out what they were doing you can't blame these teams uh, we can take a look at the prize pool and the bracket and stuff actually let's do that but actually i need to shoot down six more helicopters first um, which is more important than whatever it is that we're supposed to be doing today i missed i'm bad i feel like it's not doing anything <laughs> am i hitting him <laughs> there we go <laughs> Hippie is subscribed to the Derek School of Balance where you just nerf good things until everything is balanced. Yeah, 
And also I believe in hyper specialized divs because I've seen Steel Division 2. And this time next year there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be like 60 divisions in the game. And by the year after there's gonna be almost 100, just like with Steel Division 2. And so if you've got these divisions that can do everything, then every division's gonna be the same anyway, so you might as well have hyper specialized divisions. Oh, there we go. We completed the level with 12 seconds to spare. I'm sure they'll forgive me. I'm sure they'll forgive me. Uh, so we're back in game. <laughs> 103 people watching me play Heli Attack 2. And now we get to sit through the deployment. That was my alarm going off. We get to sit through the deployment now. Because if we... Actually, let's speed up the deployment. Pause. And then... Yeah, okay. So we'll just speed up the deployment and then pause and talk about the deployment. And I will time how long the deployment takes. And I will make sure that I talk about the deployment for as long as the deployment has taken. And that will maintain the seven minute delay. <laughs> yeah, every div should have strengths and weaknesses. You made me worry that it was almost not political. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So they're actually still deploying. So now we need to wait another 6 minutes and 22 seconds while we talk about the deployment because they're still deploying. Okay. <laughs> um, so over here, we've got... Uh, we got Menkar and Stanag playing 79Y and 39Y and they're actually on this side. <laughs> <laughs> and they've decided to open with a fob, aka Winchester. Um, 175 points for a fob's definitely worth it. Man, it takes these guys so long to do anything. Um, and yeah, on the left we've got Menkar. We've got we've got slash 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 Menkar four, and he's going hard in on the left, and he's also taking Foxtrot. Whereas Stanag is going really heavy on the right. So this isn't a strat you see very often because um, the right is very claustrophobic, which means it's very difficult to make any headway here. It's very difficult to make any headway here. So typically you would see this as a low intensity zone and you would see this as a high intensity zone and this as a low intensity zone. But instead what Menkar and Stanag have decided to do is... Um, Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I think that was always going to end one way. Yeah, exactly. I'm the number one Heli Attack 2 player ranked worldwide. Derek's nerf grappling hook, please. And we got lots of hearts for NBK. Let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the poll, guys. The poll, who will win? 41% to 59%. We got to end this poll. And we're going to um we're going to start a new poll uh called show your support for Hippie. Uh, start a poll. Uh, who will win game one? NBK, uh, what they call Spartan system. NBK and NATO boy. Or boss of the gym. Menka and Stanag. I don't think we saw you play this map. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I never played this map. Don't worry about it. <laughs> There was no game on this map. And uh, we've, all, we've we've still got four minutes left. We've got four minutes left to keep talking about the deployment. Kind of defeats the purpose of the delay if you show their deployments before the game has started. So what, would you like to play Heli Attack 2 for another four minutes and then talk about it? Uh, I assume the game has started now. We wouldn't actually know. Um, so yeah, okay, fine. According to White Phosphorus 15, we need to play Heli Attack 2 for another four minutes. Sorry about this, guys. It's not up to me. I don't want to be accused of... Uh, uh, I don't want to be accused of uh, favoritism or whatever. I know who I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, guys. We've got to play Heli Attack 3 for another four minutes. Um, maybe we can get another level in, yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean, no? This was your idea. You just said this. Because <laughs> you're, you're right, so, you know. No poll option to vote for Wives BF review. <laughs> Who will win Heli Attack 3? I've not lost yet. Oh, I'm so good at this game. Did you see how I just missed that whole volley there? That was really good. There we go. Oh, I got another one. So yeah, we're just waiting for game one to start. 
It take ages. I didn't. I didn't really expect the deployment to take so long. Do you know any other languages? Not really. Which one would I like to learn first? Uh, I did a bit of German in school. That was fun. Um, in terms of utility, I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you see how he's dropping those bombs there? Whoa, I wish helicopters were this good in uh, Warno. And then we'll get the grenades. Oh, we accidentally ate a bomb there. Don't worry, we've only got to wait like three more minutes. Deutschland stream when I don't remember most of it. We just used to cheat on all the tests. So I got an A star. I got the highest grade possible on my GCSE German. But our teacher used to just set us homework that were really similar to the coursework. So we ba I basically got like almost 100% on the coursework. And the coursework was like, I don't know, 30 or 40% of the exam. Guided launcher. So do I have to keep the target painted? I'm actually losing here. I, I'm, I'm out of good... Oh man, I just tanked another bomb. I actually might lose. If I lose, I'm just ending the stream. Right, stream's over. How many people turned up for the heli attack and not the Warno? Yeah, speaks English all he needs. Yeah, exactly. I'm not learning Mandarin. Uh, Is there no restart option? Looks like it's just... Hello? What? Okay, just restarted the whole game again. Square circle code. Um, but yeah, we just gotta wait five minutes because, because uh, as my man said, you know, we don't wanna, we don't wanna uh, show the deployments. But to be honest, you can tell really easily if they cheated in that way because all the deployments, when we come back to look at it, will suddenly shift for one of the players. They will just suddenly shift which side they were on. Um, there we go. Let's try and get that guy. I wish I had more guns. I don't know. I feel like I'm lacking... You know, it's kind of hard to throw a grenade 300 meters into the... You see? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm eating a lot of shots. I guess I, I have to, I'm sort of forced to use the pistol. Oh man, I'm really bad at this game, I guess. The fob would be magically targeted. Yeah, exactly. But no, you were right. I just assumed that the deployment wouldn't take them six minutes. How's it going, Karma? Is that the real Karma, or is that somebody else? By real Karma, I mean there used to be a really high-level player called Karma. Uh, but his name was not Karma. It was just Karma. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if it's somebody else. Do you personally think that either of the sides will be petty enough for the unit switch to happen? Uh, no. And then it just breaks when I die. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Great, so it's been five minutes again. It's been five minutes again. So now we can <laughs> now we can uh, keep talking and we need to close this. Um Yeah, well we uh What? What? Did he really just leave the game? Bruh! <laughs> now we gotta wait five minutes again! <laughs> right, are they in game this time? <laughs> Was that on me? Was that because of me? Uh, is that why they did that? Toucan, can you let me know? Somebody let me know. Oh, he just he just DC'd. It wasn't because of me. It wasn't because of me. Well, it wasn't because of me. It wasn't because of me. So there you go. So they're in game now. And I might just play a round of Halo, honestly. <laughs> uh, we gotta find them. Where are they? Triple strike. Triple strike with almost 40 minutes left, which means that they got to the end of the deployment, if this is them. So, right, so do we get... So, the fact that it said that they'd started fighting means that we can get to the edge of the deployment. So don't worry about it. And they're on the same side, so we'll get to the edge of the deployment and then we'll cast it. Hippie is a capitalist running dog. 
It was the SBU, yeah. But they took out their own guy. They took out their own guy. <laughs> Main car's one of them. Uh, <laughs> SBU should be going for NATO, boy. Right, so presumably the game's going to start. And then should I wait another five minutes? I think I should. I think I should, just to be absolutely certain. Oh my god, they're still deploying. They're still deploying. we got to wait another five minutes. Let's look at the corner of the map again. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So we gotta wait another five minutes. We gotta wait another five minutes. Starlink disconnected. <laughs> it's the jamming. It's the jamming. Right, so sorry about this, guys. It's not really up to me, but we I didn't expect them to because they started the draft 55 minutes ago. Um so let's just play a game of Halo. Why not? Why not? So we'll keep that paused. We'll keep that paused. We'll just play a cheeky round of Halo. Can I launch both games at the same time? Forward up to the start and pot. Yeah, but they haven't finished the deployment, Toucan. They haven't finished the deployment. <laughs> They're still deploying. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll do a cheeky, cheeky Halo game while we wait. Actually, that'll probably take longer than five minutes. Yeah, it probably will. Play that helicopter thingy again. Heli, Heli Attack 3 is probably the best one because... Um... Yeah, actually, I've got an idea. Why don't we just have an intermission? So we're just waiting for game one to start. So we're going to quit this and I'll show you a video that I've been working on recently. Any second now, guys. Why don't you talk about the divisions that they're playing and the strengths and weaknesses? Yeah, okay. So let's go to uh, waryes.com. We're already in the game. And we'll talk about the, uh, the divisions. So this is the divisional analysis. Is this up to date? <laughs> <laughs> is this up to date um because i'd put that light tank at 10 uh, but i was asked to contribute to this and i didn't so let's talk about the t80bv because it is 11th cav versus t80bv divisions so t80bv is really really good and uh just look at the deck builder oh yeah good idea deck builder sorry about the lack of production quality here guys i mean i started half an hour late uh, you can't see. Oh, I see. You're just seeing. There we go. <laughs> um, so this is whyyes.com. Sorry about the lack of production quality. Uh, we started half an hour late, and they've they've started an hour late. So, so, uh, so it, we uh, we misinterpreted how long it would take them. So you can buy two can of coffee. I don't know if it's going to open up my PayPal if I do that. Uh. Whoa. Okay, so you can buy two can of coffee. A real slick one, but two can ten coffees. Great stuff on War Yes. Thank you for so far. Well, how much does it cost? Mate, it costs you five quid for a coffee. Where are you getting your coffees from? <laughs> <laughs> Although I guess they probably take a cut, right? Anyway, so if we look at the, the deck builds, for, um, for example, what are the divisions again? 11 easy, 11th cav, 79y, 39y. So 39Y is infamous for being a division that's slow off the mark. Starbucks. Starbucks makes awful coffee, dude. I used to work in the coffee industry, you know. Um, and yeah, they obviously take a cut, yeah. Let's just uh, try and get... Sorry to all 121 people who are waiting for these guys to do their deployment. Uh, I didn't expect it to take this long. Um, but yeah, we're just waiting for game one to start. So... 39Y is really good in the late game because it gets lots of tanks and lots of infantry. How do I add things to? Can... Oh, I have to press plus. Okay, cool. So the way I like to build it is, you know, like three cards of supply and uh, and um, oh, this CV is three per card, but it doesn't have smoke, but neither do the other two. So there you go. That's your CVs. And then the issue is that, crucially, if you get down to like recon, they don't have any forward deployment apart from Razvedka Saperi. Um, and motorized Razvedka, which are recon forward deployment, not airborne forward deployment. And they don't have any forward deployed AA to back it up, but they do have two AA helis. Well, they used to have two AA helis, now they only have one. Is that right, Tukun? No, they do have two. Uh, so, so uh, any tea recommendation? I like uh, Earl Grey twinings, and I like English breakfast twinings. Any second now, this game's going to start. So the way with 39Y that you open in 1v1 is that you tend to open with two AA helos, a recon helo, 
uh, the Su-25 rocket and the Su-27. And you might notice that that's like a lot of points already gone. So your air, your air game's strong, but your ground game's weak. Um, because, yeah, that's, uh, you know, 175. Let's get the calculator up. Let's get the calculator up. Because you start off with 1,500 points, right? And then you get rid of one for the recon helo, and then you get rid of 2AE for the AA helos, then you get rid of 175 for the rocket, then you get rid of 260 for the ASF. You're only left with 630 for the ground game, right? And most of that is going to be going into your Resvedka Saperis in the BTR 60 PB transport. And so people tend to deploy with like three or four of those. And so that's like minus, what is that? 360. Uh, so minus 360. And then you've only got 270 points left. And, you know, um, it starts getting really rough. Because uh, then, like, what do you follow it up with? You can't start printing your best unit, the T80 BV. You can't start printing it. Um, has it been five minutes? Let's check the stream really good production quality here guys so if we go back five minutes what's happening um yeah it's been it's been uh it's been four minutes so we got to keep talking for another minute so 39y really slow off the bat you know you compare that to something like 11 easy um whoops uh nope that one <laughs> <laughs> compare that to something like 11 easy all the 11 easy stuff is really good at the start of the game because they've all got this parachute icon which means that they're forward deployed it means that they start earlier thoughts on the coke on mtlb it's not very good we were barista or a mercenary <laughs> um but yeah let's have a look at the poll looks like uh, 56 percent of 73 of you one of you has unvoted and then revoted i'm not sure how that happened think that nbk and nato boy are gonna win and 44 percent of you now 45 whoa somebody's changing their votes somebody's changing their votes i'm gonna ban you <laughs> thinks that uh boss of the gym then karen stanag are gonna win it's definitely been five minutes now honestly right finally we're in the game <laughs> we're in the game so we can press play on this and um and then we can zoom to the end of the deployment so we already know about the fob, right? So we'll just wait for this unit to move, and then... Right, so that was another two minutes. we got to we got to talk about the deployment for two minutes now. Great. So, hello, and let's start the stream again. Hello and welcome to the Grand Finals Best of Three 2v2 tournament called DEFCON 2. No, that wasn't very good. Hello and welcome to the grand finals of the $1,169 DEFCON 2 2v2 tournament. On the blue team, we have NATO Boy and NBK playing as the 11th US Ca Cavalry Regiment and the 11 Easy Frogborn French Division. And they're up against Menkar, Rec... Um, Rec what? What's the what's the word? He's uh representing. That was it. We got Menkar representing seventy nine YA heavy tank division, and Stanang representing the thirty nine YA USSR infantry division. Both of these divisions are very slow off the bat, whereas Eleven Easy is really fast. And 11th Cav is also kind of slow. So we'll see how that goes. We're playing on the map Triple Strike, a, a map which is usually played 3v3, but is ideal for tournament 2v2 games. Basically, at the lower level of gameplay, people prefer to just sit in their lane. So they just say, I attack this zone, and then they just zoom in like this, and they play the whole game like this. Um, whereas the higher level players, such as these four, they prefer the more open games. It leads to more dynamic maneuver. It leads to more excitement. It leads to uh, more dynamic maneuver. So going through the deployments here, we've got a Menkar and Stanag, and they're opening with a FOB, which is a very high supply item. It lets you supply your guys, so they're definitely intending to spam some artillery this game. Uh, but it is a big initial point investment as 175 points that will make their deployment weaker and Menkar is really not defending Lima at all we see an Igla here the Igla is going to this building here a homosexual going to the same building as the Igla BRDM2 conquers so this is a fast 
uh, ATGM vehicle going to here uh, just to cover attacks down this flank and a recon helicopter. So really empty on this side for Menkar. And you can tell from the way the map works, right? There's no middle zone here, which is quite odd, actually. And so that means that this is quite a low priority flank because you've got to advance from here all the way over to here to get a zone. Whereas if you're in the middle of the map, uh, there's a whole zone in between between those two points there uh, called Foxtrot. And it's the same for this end of the map. You've got Echo here. So this usually tends to be quite a low intensity flank in these games. So not much there for Menkar. And he's got one Razvedka Saperi with their satchel charges going to here just to stop any rushes backline action down that road. But if they send a vehicle, he won't be able to kill it because it's a satchel charge. Please remove the waiting text. You guys are breaking my mob momentum here. Uh, there we go. Uh, actually, let's change it. Let's uh change it to uh zero zero. What they call boss or the gym, and they can be Spartan. So we'll get that like that. There we go. Give me Morbium. Give me a Morbium. There we go. So, um. <coughs> Really high production quality here. I'd like to apologize to uh, all uh, 150 of you. Um, so, Menkar going pretty easy on the left side, and in the middle seems to be the uh, nucleus of his push here. So we've got a Spetsnaz Gru here going to... Uh, that's really defensive, actually. Yep, all his units are deployed extremely defensively. It looks like he's just giving up Foxtrot, so... We got some tanks in here, some BMP2s, a T80 BV off the bat, and a CV, and he's just giving up Foxtrot. He's just giving up Foxtrot. Um, on the right side, we see Stanag. So Stanag has decided to just put his whole effort into here, which is another flank which you would consider quite low intensity because uh, it's very narrow. And that means that all this stuff is going to get stuck. Uh, or at least they'll be funneled through this area here if he's trying to attack into here. Attacking into this zone is very, very difficult. So the enemy just puts helicopters on low altitude here and kills you. Puts a guy up on this hill to shoot down at you. How do you get the NATO flag in the name? What is the code? It's NATO. <laughs> it's NATO. <laughs> um, so yeah, really big push here for the 39Y guy. Uh, but he's also deploying defensively, so not a push. So they're just giving up the two middle zones. They know that they've got the slower divisions. They're just going to play a nice slow game. But that's going to put the enemy on a plus four tick. Switching to uh, their opponent's deployments, we got NBK playing as the Rush Division, 11 Easy, Frogborn. And um, so NBK has put units all across the width of the map to take advantage of the fact that he's got the forward deployment. He is the only division in the game with airborne forward deployment. Is that right? No, because the Spetsnaz grew up airborne forward deployment, and as do the LRS. I think they might change the LRS. So anyway, he has the most substantial forward deployment. And so he's opted to cover the whole breadth of the map. Um, so he's got some Eclair scouts going over here. I mean, it's sort of the same thing where this is quite a low intensity front. We see a plane out already from, from NATO boy. Um, so this is quite a low intensity front defended only with a CV, a 20 millimeter to stop helicopters and two chocolate eclairs. This is a French unit with a really good rocket launcher uh, for the price. And they're deploying really quite defensively, like they're not even going up to here. They're really, really defending. So both teams choosing to defend here. And in mid, we see a lot of units. So we got a gazelle cannon recon. Oh, it's 55. I thought it was 60. And a cobra. Um, we got the CVs, of course, and yeah, we got Chasseurs, Paras, and Milan 2s going to Foxtrot. And we got we got loads of guys going all the way in Foxtrot, and they're basically going to get it for free. They're basically going to get it for free, uh, because the, as we have know from the other team's deployment, um, they're giving it up. And on the left here, we see a lot of units as well, and these guys are going heavy into Echo, and they're basically going to get it for free. So NATO Boy is on the left with the 11th Cav. But he is also, uh, no, hang on, he's also sort of in the middle, I guess. And NBK is sort of everywhere. So really, really interesting deployment, really interesting deployment. And now we will start the game. So I'd like to take this time to shill my YouTube channel. If you haven't heard of me yet, I am Wano's biggest mouth. 
everybody's favorite guy, Hippie. And uh, I always lag a little bit on this map. Do you guys lag on this map? Um, anyway, so we got the F-16AA2 up here just to stop any initial helicopters. So I do wonder what's going to happen to this. This guy starts with two 60% 5 HE missiles. 60% accuracy. He sees it or he hears it. He hears it. But uh, we got Stanag landing here, choosing to land. And he gets the Igler off. The Igler's got 65% accuracy with that CV up vetting him. Clutch CV up vet there. Doesn't make the grade though because this has 30% ECM. The F-16s have gone from being useless planes to being some of the best planes in the game now due to the recent speed boost, taking them to 1124 kilometers an hour. People that know about actual planes know that that is quite slow for a plane. But yeah, the forward deployed CVs are really paying off here, and uh, NATO boy and NBK are already on a plus five. Uh, this Cobra though, he's running into the AA Hilo. NATO boy not noticing that the Hilo shot at him before. He's probably going to lose that, and down it goes. And that didn't have to happen because that F-16 from the same player got hit by an Igler from that helicopter, so he knew that was there. So this helicopter's basically almost paid for itself already, but. NATO boy is in the zone and Stanag is still playing defensively. So round and round comes the F-16. He's trying to get that helicopter. He sees it. He lines it up. The, he takes it out, as you'd expect from those 60% accuracy missiles. Um, and the Osa and the Strel do not confirm the kill. So that's bad news all round. Uh, kind of hard to cover everything here. we got Cobras bullying over here. Thankfully, nothing's happening over here. Um... Spartan system have basically got this for free. They're sending some really cheap VBL recons forwards here. But I believe there'll be an AT range of that motor strokey, and he is going to kill both of those. In the middle, big throwdown happening here. Sorry, it's very difficult to cover everything. NATO boy buying another F-16. He just really wants Osas to shoot at him, I guess. And he's got two ACAVs here. I think the real fear is that these are going to get bombed, and that's why he's got the F-16, and that's why he's buying the IHawk. Problem with the IHawk, it's got really good range, but if it's here, because of the hill, it won't actually be able to shoot planes on this side. So still nothing happening over there. Most of the fighting's happening over here. Drama alert, drama alert. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, well, the, the, the overall strategy was the same, so I don't really think, I don't really buy that. <laughs> um... So we got VBL recons bullying Iglers over here. Menkar's attack on mid has begun. NATO boy and MBK on a plus two. It's about to be a plus four. And so the, the time is really ticking for Menkar and Stanag. And um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I, I don't think time's really on their side. Um the you know NATO boy is still pushing, <laughs> despite the fact that you know his 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 guys are in the lead. There's VBL recon. Look at that. That's a 50 cal. It just murked that. Thankfully, it survives. These A cavs being microed expertly here. This one showing side armor gets they on the T80 BVs. Needs some supply up here for both players. There is a uni mark here for NATO boy, which means that his infantry can continue to push. And the engineers flash and the dismounted troopers massively outmatch the motor strokey. And Stanag's just lost his first T80 BV. That is really bad. That is really bad. But once he gets this to here, he can start hitting these guys and they won't be able to just walk around in circles again. Although I'm pretty sure they've been spotted. Right, so NATO boy really needs to burst this down as fast as possible because if it starts vanishing, he's not going to have any chance. And yeah, with the two A calves, that goes down. SU-27 being evac there. And uh, here comes the smoke. <laughs> here comes the smoke. I'm surprised it took so long. And yeah, these dismounted troopers, they absolutely eat Moto Strelke for breakfast. That's primarily because the Moto Strelke, they've got good RPGs, but they've only got one MG. Whereas the dismounted troopers bring three machine guns. Um, this is basically uh, it's a very interesting matchup, <laughs> considering they cost the same. Uh, it is interesting, but the advantage of the Moto Strelke is, is that they come in BMP2 IFVs. You can't use BMP2 IFVs in the forest. So they need to be here, and then that gives NATO boy a huge advantage in the forest. Really needs to get those ACAVs repaired. Over here, Menkar's pushing in, and um, yeah, it's not going particularly well for him. He's managed to... Uh, NATO boy contributing a CV tank there. Apparently they need more CVs. 
he's managed to get back in the zone, but this is the middle zone, and so he's still at a disadvantage. They've got eight minutes to turn this around. This T-80BV is engaging this Bradley here. Clutch smoke there saves him, and to be honest, if this had hit, that thing would have exploded. Um, so he needs to get that the hell out of there. We've got an LGBT here. It's going to go for the A cabs, but if the IHawk hits it, it's it's going to be tough, uh, particularly because those pivads will probably deal the one additional damage needed to kill the plane. He pulls it out, and the IHawk misses. But now NATO boy really needs to move this IHawk, and I did not notice that over there. These VBL recons are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the tanks. This is a 30-point unit, and yeah, those ranges, the helicopters will win. I meant toe-to-toe -to -toe with the helicopters, not the tanks. Chassos, Paras using the 750 meter range rocket launcher. Kind of hard to view both things at once. I guess this is a decent angle. You can see that going on there. And NBK shooting smoke of his own. And there we go. Menkar's managed to neutralize the zone. And that will put them on a plus two. But over here, there's no way Stanag's getting in here in the next five minutes. Uh, but that does give them 14 minutes to sort this out. Uh, Menkar trying to send a CV round the side. Will it get there in time? Who knows? But there's a Cobra here, and so it won't live very long regardless. TO 55s trying to take out the VBL recons. Um, over here, NATO boy pushing hard. Takes this guy down to 1 HP. He needs some infantry in here. To be honest, he needs to pull his guys back. He lost a couple dismounted troopers there. I thought there were three before. There might have been two. Paramalan 2 here because of this hill. Can't shoot at that T80 BV. And uh, yeah, over here we got Saperi RPOs engaging Legionnaire Paras, but the Legionnaire Paras are in the building, which makes them far, far, far stronger. And this BMP2 is going to show up in AT range, so he can't bring this to bear. He needs to put this here, then it could shoot there. Um, over here, M1A1s, so NATO boy and NBK doing what they do best, both fighting both flanks and here we go we got a vbl pc going for mike and the vlra 50 is scouting if they get that this is going to tick really fast this is a pretty low intensity front here um and stanag still trying to get in nato boy massively overextended um and down goes the su 24 he to the f-16 which does not get punished by the cub and the tunguska um, but it does he does manage to clear out one Chasseurs Paras and one Paris Flam. It was not really worth it. So Razvedka Saperi don't have AT, which means the Saggy can bully them. This Paraminstrels needs to get out of here because he's taken that TO-55 shot. Um, and yeah, things have started to slow down a little bit, but... All the while... Oh, we've got a Puma Pirate going over here. Oh, no. Is that because the Grad fired from over here? Then he's going to know that <laughs> he's going to see the fob. He's going to see the fob. I'm pretty sure that's because the Grad fired from over here, but we did miss that Grad volley. SU-24 HE coming for a Para P4 Milan. This ain't the play, really. This is a 215-point plane, and it eats a Minstrel, and it eats another Minstrel... And it's really not looking good for Menkar and Stanak. I do wonder if they'll make a video saying they lost game one on purpose like they did last time. But this is really not looking good. Menkar needs to push through this zone. But how is he going to do that? There's just too much here. That TABV is about to die as well. There's two M1A ones on it because NATO boys gone back to uh, defensive on this flank and started pushing this flank. There we go, CV's in Mike. They're on plus five. They'll be on plus eight in a second. What, but this will have to go back there. We've got a, a beacon, an attack beacon, and they got that T-80BV here. Act really bleeding out here. It's, it's, it's not looking fantastic for them at all. You need some recon here, really. Motor Stroke will stop a unit sneaking through, but the fact of the matter is they need to get a CV in here right now and they need to take this back, but I don't think they've noticed. He's actually going to drive into the next zone. <laughs> they've not noticed. They've not noticed because this would be going over there if they had. Um, I don't know if they spotted that. The, the Puma Pirate clearly went down. I don't see any artillery purchases, so maybe they didn't see it in time. This BRDM2 is now going for Delta. I don't think that's going to get there in time. They've got two minutes to sort this out. He's just not reacted at all um, to what's going on over there. And NBK pushing up with some fresh infantry. There we go, another zone. It's now plus 10, one minute remaining. Over here, Stanag's not getting in here. I mean, there's only two guys... Um, 
so maybe he could. Maybe he could, but this can see all that. So he would have to put it right in this... Can we just get a bead on that? He would have to put it right in this corner to, to have a chance. And he's going for it, so maybe he'll manage it. This guy, I don't think he's going to get there in time. 58 seconds left on the board here. NBK actually pushed Menka back out of this zone. He's going for the CV. And over here, yeah, Menka surrendered. Not sure what happened to that BRDM. Did it get killed? No, that's not run out of bullets. So it must have been uh, a helicopter or something. And that is game. So let's see if that was an intentional loss. That's what they said last time. Last time when uh, when I played against them. They said that they lost the game one intentionally. Um, but you see, Stanag, uh, 1 to 2 KD there. NATO boy really beating the crap out of him. Um, and, uh, and, and not a great KD for Menkar either. So just a superior strategy from NBK and NATO boy. They got a forward deployed division and they, uh, and they absolutely rinsed them. So if we just go to our poll here, we'll see that, don't change your votes now. Uh, we'll see that 61% uh, of you were right. And, uh, and so we'll end that one there and, uh, and we'll say, uh, do a new poll. Um, and we'll say outdraft strategy or outskill micro uh, outdraft outskill and uh, trying to get that outdraft and out skill. So it looks like we're back to playing Heli Attack 2 for the next 20 minutes. And <laughs> um, I'll ask them to send me a replay. I don't know if they will. Here we go. Here we go. Um, oh yeah, because NBK doesn't record his replays. So I don't know if we'll get the replay. But game 2, the draft has already happened. Keep in mind that we are delayed, right? Um, and let's check the chat a little bit. Let's do some chat check. So I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in. Um, everybody's favorite Francophile hippie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I might pin that one, actually. No defense in depth. Uh, yeah. 12-year-old humor. Let me help you next game commentate. No, because I have no idea who you are. <laughs> and uh, yeah, bring back the heli attack stream. It looks like it's time for some heli attack. And yeah, the infiltration was great, but you saw that the BRDM recon never actually, uh, BRDM CV never actually made it, never actually made it. Paul, did they lose game one on purpose? Oh yeah, probably should have done that actually, probably should have done that. We got, we got people saying it's Avdivka and you gotta, you know, like the Russians say it's Avdivka because the Ukrainians all died. The Ukrainians say it's Avdivka because the Russians all died. It really is a choose your own adventure war out there. Um, and, uh, yeah. All the all the hats are red. Uh, what is a unit switch? We got a side switch here. Throwing makes no sense. Skill issue. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's go to the graph for game two. The draft for game two. So team switch side, which means NBK and NATO boy are now going to be unpacked, and the map is a volcano. <laughs> and um, and yeah. Um, so. What? Oh no, because that's game one. Okay, so it says yeah, they had to rehost. Second map is volcano. We play pact. You ban our two divs, and Menka and Stanag ban thirty-five Y and twenty-seven Y. So let's take a look at volcano, and we'll talk about bans. Uh, but yeah, that was just a total rinse, dude. NATO boy <laughs> just ran through it. But I mean, um. And uh, it didn't go s much better for Menkar in the middle. Uh, just check in the profiles of these players. You see NBK has played 18 ranked games this season, the 200 multiplayer games. He might have reset this. He's a war game Red Dragon Pro. That's why he's so good for how many games he's played. When I click on NATO Boy, it comes up with me. Apparently, I'm NATO Boy. Apparently, I'm rank 8. Uh, Stanag is rank 97th. And... Um, it's not wise to flame the players, but basically, uh, the the guy he's replacing was was uh, was really 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 good. Um, let's put it that way. And uh, yeah, so Stanag not played that many games, ranked ninety seventh, and we got Menkar here, ranked eighty ninth. Not played that many ranked games, but he's played a lot of multiplayer games. 
And so these guys tend to practice by playing 2v2s, as do these guys. I know these guys have been practicing with Homelander and someone else. Um, they've been playing a lot of 2v2s with Homelander, uh, who's another really good player. And so th that's how they've been learning. And I think it's the same for these two. So the ranked game's not really representative um, of the skill of the players because they're practicing 2v2 by playing 2v2, which is not ranked. So let's talk about Volcano. Um, so Volcano, really, really big map. <laughs> really interesting map. Um, just wait in a second here. And oh yeah, I forgot to update the text, didn't I? Forgot to update the text. So it is now one to Spartan. Great. So Volcano, huge map. Lots and lots and lots of flags. Um... I call them flags now. I've, I've been talking to Derek's too much. Lots of zones, lots of zones, and that means that if you if you've got a forward deployed division, you can you can basically get you know two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve right off the bat because you'll get all these zones first, uh, and that will put you at a plus twelve, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's lots of zones, lots of room for maneuver, lots of room for sneaky sneaky. Uh, and so if we go back to our draft, you will see that is why they have banned 35Y and 27. I'm surprised they banned 27, not 4th. Uh, but yeah, 35Y VDV get forward deployment. They're the only airborne div on pact, um, which means that, you know, you'd want them so you can take all this. And that's why they banned it. Fourth, Mott Shutson also gets a small forward deploy component. Um, and yeah, so I'm surprised by the 27th ban. But yes, um, NBK and NATO boy do not opt for the fourth. They ban 82nd and 11 easy. This makes sense. They're the two strongest divisions in the game. They're both airborne. They're both on NATO. So you might as well ban those. And they pick 79Y and Red Berlin, which is Berlin Gropers. Red Berlin is widely regarded as the worst div in the game. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Let's talk about why that is. Last patch, it was one of the best divs in the game, but something has changed. And I assume these players must be aware of this. So Red Berlin, you get a nice Logi tab. Your Inf tab, uh, you don't get any forward deployment anymore. What you do get is Motschutz and Strella, who are missing a weapon. They're eight men, but only carry seven small arms weapons, and the Strella. And uh, Motschutz and SVD, who also only get one MG, so these are just a bad version of regular Motschutz because they lose their RPG and instead get a sniper, but the sniper performs similarly to the MG. And you get Motschutz and Metis, who carry two fewer Metis than they should do. <laughs> than they should do. Uh, looks like everybody's talking in Russian now. Uh, gonna have to do some translating on that. So yeah, these guys get two fewer Metis than the average Metis squad. So the idea behind Berlin Red is that they get these Vashutsen, who are these sort of shock security military police forces, but they get really low availability. So you see that they come at four availability, which is like special forces availability, but they're one vet lower than special forces. They don't have special forces. So th this unit really isn't very good. Um, the unit itself is really good. 10 strength, lots of guns, good RPG, you know, 10 strength, SMG satchels, and this one is like 10 strength MG uh, napalm launcher. Uh, the units themselves are good, but the card makes them bad because the availability is very low. You get the Yavash Panzerjäger down here. And they don't get very good RT either. They basically get like 4th RT tab. This thing is okay, I suppose. And for the tanks, this is the, the best part of the division, is the fact that they get 3 cards of T55A, which means you can bring them at 1 vet. I used to bring them at 2 vet, but I actually ran out. And you get some pretty decent early game momentum from... Um, from Russian uh, with a bunch of T-55s backed up by Motschutz and Strela for organic AA with a cub and a shilker at the back. And you just smoke everything up, try and close the distance. The T-34s are garbage. They should really be 30 points. The main disadvantage of this is that they've got a kinetic round, which means that um, 
They can't shoot heavy tanks unless they get really, really, really close. If it was a heat round, they could shoot from any distance, but they basically just can't shoot enemy tanks unless they're right next to them, at which point they've already died. Um, heli tab's not very good either. The air tab is okay. You don't get a seed plane. You get these trainer jets. They've got 6 HP, which means that they die in one shot to an Osa, a Rapier, a Cub, a Buck, a Chaparral. A man pad, if it gets a crit, if a stinger gets a crit, it will one shot these because the crit deals one extra damage. Uh, but they're good in the opener. You shoot all three out and you, you get some really good early kills with them because the payload's pretty juicy. It's a thousand kilos of high explosives. Uh, the rocket one I've never seen used because rockets are bugged, so why would you bring it? Um, the napalm plane has shake and bake because it's got nap it's got a thousand kilos of napalm and 500 kilos of high explosives so that's a pretty decent loadout actually and they get the really good at plane 50 percent accuracy fast high well it's not that fast high ecm and they get a decent cluster plane but their asf is this which has eight hp so it dies in one shot to a book or a cub so 79 white and red berlin and menkar and stanag picked tks and second uk really interesting game has somebody oh okay um uh tks and second uk so second uk the second weakest division in the game don't know if i've covered that already but on this map i mean obviously it's the second weakest division in the game right uh but on on this map you could say that it's sort of okay i guess maybe a little bit uh because you you can get the helicopters out because you get a lot of guys in helicopters and that means you can get some early map control quite quickly. And you've got the forward deployment in the form of the SAS, who now cost 100 points, even though the man pads got nerfed. Um, and yeah, you get these Lynx rockets, which, uh, which are pretty funny because you can drop the guys, shoot all the rockets, and then sell the transport. <laughs> <laughs> which i think is a bug i don't think that's by design and so you can on these bigger maps you can really cover a lot of ground with the air mobile and the sas and the foxes which you get two cards of um but in a longer game they'd struggle a bit and your aa is kind of crap because the the javelin lml is now awful it's now awful and uh uh, so you're forced to bring the regular javelin. The regular javelin's basically a bad stinger. It's basically a bad stinger. Uh, no, it's a bad igla, sorry, because they're the same price. Yeah. Um, so the igla gets 5% um, less accuracy, but it also gets more range. Um, and it's fire and forget, whereas the javelin needs to keep it painted. So, uh, so it's, it's not particularly fantastic. Not particularly fantastic. Uh, looks like the Russians are taking over the chat. What is this draft? Yeah, good question. But if you ban 82nd, and I can sort, I can understand the second UK pick. The TKS pick is a bit out there. Uh, we'll see if they've got into the uh, Russians go ahead. Are there any Russians in this game? It's three Ukrainians and a Belarusian. <laughs> um, so we'll, are they in the game? Volcano in deployment, spectate. Is TKS good? If I leave this, can I get back in? Um, so we'll just uh, we'll just we'll just look at TKS because they're probably still deploying anyway. But at least we know spectates on, and I can re get back in. Is TKS good? Uh, it's got some advantages, particularly in these sort of grindy infantry maps. Um, basically, you do get forward deployment in the form of the green berets, so they're pretty good. You also get these guys. Which who are now five availability. I didn't notice that. I didn't notice they'd gone up by one. This is a really good unit, actually. Um, so I might get rid of my Jäger Aufklärer. Put this in. This chat has been captured by the special Slav Schizo forces based. Um, somebody's sending me theme messages. I need to read what it is before I show you. Okay, it's just somebody also saying Russians go ahead. There's no Russians in this game. <laughs> <laughs> There's three Ukrainians and a Belarusian. Um, but yeah, this unit's really, really strong, actually. It's like a better BGS, uh, except these guys get the exceptional optics. But yeah, these guys are really good at close range. They've got that MP5 SD, which is the best SMG in the game. There's multiple categories of SMGs. This is the best one. The... the uh, this is the best type of MG in the game, 
and they get satchels as well, which got buffed a bit. They do a bit more suppression now. And they're five availability, two vet, special forces, airborne, shock. So they're really, really good. Um, you get the Rollins for the AA, and you get Ihawks, and Fliegerfaust are sort of neither here nor there anymore. Gazelle cannons if you need them. The disadvantage is that the tanks aren't very good. You get these locked up no vet with, um, with uh, you know, disheartened. And they're just sort of very expensive for what they are. They're just not very good uh, at all because they're disheartened and everything. So you, you're forced to rely on para Milan spam, P4 Milan spam, which you get two cards of. You get 12 of these. You can bring even more if you want, if you want Milan 1 spam. Uh, but yeah, these two teams do have a do have a grudge here. Yeah. Um, great. So and you get you get some decent artillery. So TKS is actually not that bad. It's not that bad. Um, it's it could be construed as the anti airborne because you get these guys to shut down airborne forward deployment and these guys to shut down air airborne forward deployment and then you just get loads of units so the way um these are 10 avail now there used to be 12. the way guard extrams built it was he just ran two cards of zikarungs and um and just spammed zikarungs all game they're they're good but well, they're fun sorry but they're not good uh, they're not they're not as good as AE second airborne for example right so let's uh great so that means that they've started so we'll get to the edge of the deployment and then we'll wait f to be honest we've already waited five minutes uh we'll get to the edge of the deployment and i'll just stick my head in the ground um actually we need to look at one unit so okay so we know that there's we know that there's some vashuts and um because obviously when that moves that means the deployment has ended and then i'll wait five minutes and then i'll put and then i'll cover the deployment i guess oh okay they're still deploying they're still deploying it's heli attack time it's heli attack time uh great but that means i can start translating some of this waffle you guys have been spewing um lots of english in this chat here uh is it a big stretch to assume that they were emotionally pre-tilted, and that's why they got owned this hard. I don't think so. I think uh, I think after this game, they will say that they intentionally threw game one because that's what they said against me and T Man. They said, "Oh, we meant to lose that one." Uh, <laughs> whether or not that's true, we love you, T Man. T Man isn't here. <laughs> uh, there we go. So we get a just get some of that chat and stick it in Google Translate and find out what the hell people have been saying. Um, so this is language detected. Apparently it's Ukrainian. Apparently it's Russian. Uh, my guys will win. They're just better. Slavs will win one way or another. I guess so. Um, that says, oh, Eric. <laughs> um, forget the guys on the volcano and relax. Interesting. Welcome new member, Henricus. They picked Gropers? Yeah, exactly. Did they play Volcano yesterday? Ah, oh, these are guys talking about the practicing. They're talking about the practicing. Hippies blown away by Russians in the chat. Yep. Russians hate me. Ukrainians hate me. That means we're doing a job well done. Um, okay, so this guy is now daytime drinking. <laughs> 80 points for T55A is a lot, but um, I can understand why um and yeah we gotta wait a long time for the deployment gotta wait a long time is tks good so that's all where we got to and then that said uh yeah they're talking about how they're practicing for the games more russian i mean it's sort of like poorly translated so he thinks of ash shots and are good uh the card makes them bad i think i think the actual unit is good so there we go. So we're just waiting. We're just waiting for the. Um, let's get the text up. Waiting five minutes. Waiting for deployment. So we'll just give it cheeky five minutes, and we'll play some heli attack. Um. Yeah, I used to live with a guy from near Mariupol. Um, he had some very interesting things to say. 
do you think you let T-Man down or T-Man let you down? I think we let each other down. This guy's speaking in Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't mind. You can speak in whatever language you want, but obviously it's it's more coherent if everybody's speaking English, right? Um, but I'm not going to force you. So there we go. We're going to be playing some Heli Attack 3 while we wait for five minutes for the deployment. Uh, I'm sorry that we have to do this, but it is uh, requested by the players. Requested by the players. And it's just it just takes all the ambiguity out of it, basically, because you saw people saying, hey, man, he left that game. Maybe he did that so that he could go look at the deployment in the replay. And I don't think he did that. And if we just take as much of the ambiguity out of the equation as possible, then there's no, if there's no accusations, then there's no arguments, right? Um, so we just do what we can, and that involves, uh, that involves playing Heli Attack 2. Second infantry is forbidden, God willing. <laughs> So yeah, we're just we're just waiting, just waiting for the the game two of a best of three of the one thousand one hundred sixty nine dollar Defcon two two v two Warno tournament, the biggest prize pool in uh, Warno history, um, and uh, probably the biggest tournament in Warno history simply because as a two v two with thirty two teams, that means sixty four players. So yeah, I think it was. Uh, if you like Warno tournaments. Join the War Yes and SDL Discords. They both both host Warno tournaments. They're basically the only ones that do. The only other tournaments I've seen have, uh, have either had three players in them. Um, I won that one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> or they uh, or or they're like French only because the French guys host their own French only tournaments. I'm banned from the French Discord. I, I don't know why. I've got no idea why. <laughs> um. And, uh, and yeah, they only let French people in. So if you're French, you can join the French Discord. I'd actually highly recommend that, actually, because they've got a greater range of players. Basically, Tiberius Rancor just joins the tournament every game and just beats everybody else up because he's about three times as good as anybody else that enters. Why did it do that again? Is it because I was chatting shit about Tiberius and he just got me? Square Circle Co. Man, I was going to win that round as well. I didn't press anything on my keyboard. What do you mean? That was uh, that was always going to happen like that, Manco. I mean, so, if you've ever seen Hippie versus Derek, it only it only ends one way. It always only ends one way. Um, fueled by hatred of Hippie. Um, but yes, those videos will go live uh, tomorrow. Maybe I don't know. Probably tomorrow. Be rendering videos right now. Does Hippie have ADHD? Uh, not formally diagnosed. <laughs> but no, we gotta. I'm just trying to keep everybody entertained while we wait five minutes, and there's only really one way to do that. Halo games take ten minutes, so so it's got to be Heli Attack Three. Um, and I gotta keep talking, which means I need to find something to talk about. But yeah, second UK is the second weakest division in the game after first UK. That's why we've seen it played in both finals, because of how weak it is. And um, TKS uh, is sort of the uh, the Guard X from Classic from the game, the semi-finals game. That's how they won their semi-finals. They won it with TKS. Whoa, did you see that dodge? See how he dodged me there? Um, there we go. Like chain gun. Oh, nice. Let's hope the game doesn't reset this time. It might just reset because I'm winning. Whoa, look at the DPS on that. Get that railgun. Bam! Nope, it's not shooting. Bam! Takes a long time to reload. These guys are really messing me up as well. There we go. Oh, get another chain gun. Yep. Uh, uh, where is my chain gun? Oh, that's a real gun. Might as well fire the last round on this. And then we'll get the chain gun up there. And once we win this level, then it'll be time to uh, cast the deployments, I reckon. Because it's probably been more than five minutes, which lets me speed up a little bit more. Um, so yeah, here we go. We're just uh, we're just waiting, playing Heli Attack in the library. <laughs> uh, but there we go. So we won that level, and let's check the clock. Let's check the clock. Has it been five minutes? It's been five minutes and thirty-nine seconds. So we'll just save and quit that. 
And we'll get on with the deployments. No, I haven't. That's interesting. How do we fix British divs? Yeah, I think they just, I think challenges just need to be like 200 points. I reckon, I think that'll fix it. Do the French segregate? Yeah, they do participate in this tournament. Yeah, but they also have their own French only tournaments. Uh, I'm not, I'm not doing humanities. Okay, I thought somebody was accusing me of doing humanities there. Right, so we'll speed up for the rest of the deployment. These guys deploy really, really slowly. And then we'll talk about the deployments. So, we know that there's a Shilka. <laughs> we see a Shilka at the bottom left. Um, look how long they take. They're definitely, <laughs> definitely taking their time. Uh, great, so we just wait. Just wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, we forgot to do a poll. Oh, so yeah, let's check the poll. Um, so you think it was... So most people think it was an outdraft and an outskill, I guess. Uh, least defensive stem laws. <laughs> and uh, we'll do another poll, start poll. Who will win game two? NBK and NATO boy. I've done it the wrong way around. It needs to be Spartan system, NBK, NATO boy. Or what are they called? Boss of the gym, Menka and Stanags. Stanag. So we just get that up there. And uh, we're still waiting on this deployment, apparently. We know there's a Shilka. We know there's a Mosh that's a Metis. Just waiting for... There we go, there we go. Right, so now we can cover the deployment. Whoops. Now we can cover the deployment. And we can probably get rid of waiting for deployment. <laughs> <laughs> we go, we go. Hope it's boss of the gym so we get a third game. Yeah, that's probably... Yeah. Uh, I want NBK to win 2-0. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't do a PhD in humanities. I did not do a PhD in humanities. I know what hippie is in Russian because I've seen that said so many times. So he's definitely saying my name there. So I need to find out what this is real quick. He said, uh, hippie, I'm your fan. Check that out. I've got fans. I've got fans. Great. Thank you. Um, right. Uh, we're not going to be checking any more Russian. It just takes too long. No, it's best of three. Deployments. Volcano. You got to get lots of CVs out at the start. You got to get lots of CVs out at the start. Let's just start again. Hello and welcome to this game two of a best of three of the DEFCON 2 2v2 grand finals played between Stanag uh, playing as TKS and Menkar playing as second UK infantry division, so named because it is the second weakest division in the game. And they're going up, uh, their team name is Boss of the Gym, and they're going up against Spartan System with NBK playing Berlin Gropers, widely regarded as the worst div in the game. So I don't know if that was a BM pick or if he's got a special strat hidden. And NATO Boy playing 79Y, also regarded as a strong div. So looking at the map, there's lots and lots and lots of flags on this. Hi, come. Derek's is infiltrating my brain and there's rent free in my head. There's lots and lots of zones on this map. We got a we got we got lots of zones in the middle. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve points worth of middle zones. Um so uh so yeah, it's uh if you got forward deployed, you're going to have a big advantage. And Menkar 4 has the forward deployed and he gets the guys in the helicopter. So this is looking pretty favorable for the NATO side. Definitely a better draft for NATO, but part of that is just because um, Pact only has one and a half airborne divs and one of them was banned. That's 35Y. Fourth Motschutzen was would probably be a much better pick than Berlin Gropers. But we'll see what NBK is cooking up here. So you got to get some CVs out early. And we see uh, NATO boy deploying some Spetsnaz crew all across the map. NBK, NATO boy, they both play both flanks. It's really interesting to watch, actually. And um, Hugo isn't out, and I'm not Derek's, and there are no women on the internet. Um, but yeah, we see big boy attack by NBK, and he's going mm, just sort of everywhere. <laughs> kind of hard to tell these apart. Um, so we got a lot of Motschutz and Metis, etc. go into these middle houses with some anti-tank guns for the left and the right. He's just So he's defending here, defending pretty hard here. 
uh, with the anti-tank guns. These things are not particularly great. They don't even have max range. 85 millimeters, so the pen ain't great either. So uh, they're probably just going to lose these two zones. And the 100 millimeter, which also gets the uh, the Bastion ATGM, uh, and that's got 2,800 meters range. That's pretty good. So he's actually putting that there to shoot down the road. So very defensive on the left. And then he's got all these uh, ZSU anti-air guns going all over the place. So defensive on the left and aggressive in the middle. They're going for Oscar there with a bunch of recon cars. Spets now screw. Yeah, recon for the left. And then we got NATO boy on the right here. Primarily NATO boy on the right. Primarily NBK on the left. And uh, he's going over here. So Razved could be MP2. I'm not sure why he started it on that road. Is that faster? Might be. Additional forces for the Oscar Echo attack. And yeah, NATO boy is going pretty heavy on the right side here. So we got a we got a supply truck. We got a mortar for smoke. We got a Spetsnaz Gru, which is gonna go up there and then to there. Two BM2Ds. They are D because they have additional armor. D for additional. Uh, thanks for the input, Zixme. <laughs> not gonna read that other one out. <laughs> da licks my balls. Um, I'm gonna got a two vet T80 BV. Um, it's three vet because of the CV, so that's going up to there. A cub, an Osa, and a Motres Rosvedka. So, attacking in the middle, defending on the left, and contesting on the right. Uh, switching over to their opponent's deployment, we've got a NATO Stanag, aka Winchester. And he has spotted, um, well, okay, never mind. So Stanag's on the left, which means he'll be going up against NATO boy again. So we'll see how that goes, because last time NATO boy decisively won that matchup. And Menkar's on the right, and he's going against NBK. Uh, and that seemed like a bit more of a of, of a of a fair game in the in the last game. So we got Stanag here deploying these, uh, his, and we spoke about this, we spoke about this in the draft, the Green Berets for the forward deployment, the FS Jaeger B1 for the forward deployment, and they're going heavy on Alpha. He is going to be forward deploying the Bejesus out of Alpha, backed up by two of these very powerful AA trucks, which um, uh, it looks like TKS get and 11 Easy get. One of these shuts down any helicopter. It's a bit silly, really. <laughs> And an AMX-10 RC race car, so-called, because it is a wheeled recon tank with very good optics, mediocre stealth, and it can take one hit from most things with its three armor. This thing is really, really annoying to fight into. TKS get that. I forgot to mention that in the draft. So if he gets that on here, he can shoot all the forward deployment going down there. And then he's got a Milan 2 and a Super Puma uh, going to that building. So really aggressive attack from Stanag. Really aggressive. You love to see the aggression. CV, of course. Supply. Gazelle Cannon with the Auto Cannon. And Gazelle Hot 2 with the ATGMs. Just to shoot guys coming down this road. And then one Green Beret is going over to Charlie. That is a very interesting deployment. Like, why not just unload him here and move it? Why? <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Um, P4 Milan with a Milan 2, going to there, just to cover, uh, I mean, I, I, can he shoot that far? Uh, 2,000 meters from there, so he, he can shoot stuff on this road, I guess. And then, yeah, in the middle, we got two Green Berets and an SAS, and the Green Berets are going for, uh, for the forest, and the SAS are going for the house. Behind that, a big girl squad. Brownie girl squad, blondie girl squad. And they're unloading there. And then the transport, which has its own recon, is going to here. That's very smart. CV, of course. Two, uh, a P4 Milan and a Rover Milan. And they're both just going to here just to stop any early attacks on Oscar. And then two air mobiles in Lynx rockets. And they're, one's going for... That's actually quite conservative. That's actually really quite conservative, considering they're playing against guys that don't have forward deployment. So quite conservative uh, deployments here. They like, yeah, they are live. They are live. It's live. It's just I press pause to cast the deployments. That's literally it. Um, so we got a we got an air mobile going to here, and on the right side we've got not a whole lot. So both teams deciding to go quite light on the right. Um, hang on. So javelin LMLs, these things are useless. I don't know why he's bringing them. We'll see. We'll see how, if they perform. Uh, I think a tracked rapier, tracked rapier, and then um, 
uh, standard javelins probably better now. And yeah, so quite light on the right. So we've got some uh, motorized airborne going to here. SAS going to mid, uh, two going to mid, and one going to the far right here. And then he will advance across here and attempt to snipe CVs. And then three snipers. So that's the entire contingent of snipers deployed right at the start. These guys can be good because they get an additional level of stealth when they're stood still. So on these open maps with these two trees you actually won't see this guy until you're right on top of him so he's putting one there one there and the third one is oh uh, the th third one's actually going to here is that actually is that cover there my your, hi your cursor doesn't highlight anyway so let's get on with the game and i'd like to take the time to accidentally hide the hood and uh, thank the generous channel joiners they get the videos up to a week early they get the names on the screen they really help me out they get members only videos um that is a tree yeah it is but i don't know because sometimes the trees aren't actually classed as cover and if there's not enough trees and yet we see two planes coming out from nbk nato boy the mig 21 bison which dies in one hit to uh, most things and uh the molding mig and they're going toe to toe with significantly more expensive planes but these planes have been microed incorrectly and um yeah menka and stanag those planes were far more expensive than their opponents uh looks like they will these two will get out um yeah that was just miss micro because they both bought one plane each they didn't micro them properly whereas these guys bought one plane each and they microed them together perfectly it's very very difficult to do that and that gives the aa3 helo hunter two four hp missiles with 56 percent accuracy but it looks like one miss there because this thing's only got eight hp it gives that the opportunity to try and snipe that Milan too. He's just buying more of them. They're just buying more planes. NATO boys bought him a plane as well. But this guy's landing. There's no way that gets that in time. Um, you see the point tick starting and stopping. There's just so many zones out here. You see he did get through. Uh, looks like that Phantom. Yeah, he got him on the rebound. Even though he's evac he's still shooting. Another Mirage purchase. This Mulder's probably going to die because that Phantom is still shooting despite being evac <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, between them, they managed to take that out. Um, NATO definitely has the superior planes here. Osaro opens up on the hot two, takes that one out. But the Gazelle Cannon's still here. Uh, never mind. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, NATO boy is getting pushed out of that zone pretty hard. Looks like uh, Blue have a decisive lead in the middle as well. And, yeah, the mortars open up. The smoke starts. Here come the BMD2s. But the problem you've got is that this race car can get to here and just shoot. And you can't see him because the, your only recon's about to die. Same with the Milan 2 shooting the T80 BV. It's not looking great for NBK and NATO boy. I think this troll pick of Berlin Gropers was... Um, inadvisable but we've got a cv coming up to here and it will probably take that zone um nbk putting a lot of guys there but they're not really doing anything um so like if they all rush forwards they could kill this but they're just sort of sat there and um yeah the ticks okay nato boy miss microing there almost capped this and then took it back out you saw it almost capped there he could have taken that because there's no cv in sight here this one's all the way back here so that was really silly of him actually and now he's turned it back around again and now it's turning around <laughs> bit of a miss micro there su25 he you never see this so this is a frog foot uh, but it doesn't have rockets so you just use the close range bombs um and I'm not sure what it dropped on. It will probably get all three of these. Okay, so there you go. Um, what is that? 3,000 kilos worth of bombs? Maybe there is an advantage to having this. And then you can keep it around for the guns and stuff. TABV still being bullied by the Milan 2, but the AMX-10 went down. Here we go, LGBTs on the board now. That's definitely going to kill that. The only question is, can you avenge it? SU-25 didn't get... That was a serious misplay. Um, they managed to intercept the missile, actually, so that thing didn't definitely die, as I said. But if this guy was facing the right way, he would have got the AA missiles and he would have got the guns off, and that definitely would have gone down. So that was a big miss micro over there. Over here, not too much happening, just 80 GMs. Yeah, these things in the open are lethal. One Vashutsen versus one SAS. My money's on the Vashutsen, actually. Um... Over here, uh, we got a uh, we got this ZU thing trying to take out the green berets. Lack of CVs over here. Rovers coming up. The back ones have all been capped. Plus six for Stanag and Menkar because of NATO boys' folly here. Oh my god! Because he tried to take it back there and then he sent it back there. So that, that, was, that was really bad play actually. Um, and this has been taken on this side because you can defend it here because of the trees. But the, all you've got here is like nothing. I think you've got like one tree there, so you just die. So pretty difficult zone for red. 
Over here, NBK is slowly winning there. Needs to get some smoke on the board and start, you know, getting these zones with his smoke. Napalm doesn't drop. Crucially, 2nd UK does not have access to 8HEAA, and this has 8HP, which means he needs to hit it twice to kill it. Um, TKS does have the Ihawks. Roland 3s only do 6. It looks like he's not brought the Ihawks. T55As in the open here. This is sort of what Gropers is all about, T55As, but the, the Milan 2s will bully the bejesus out of them. Over here, NBK and NATO Boy together have managed to get back into this zone, but due to NATO Boy's folly, um, that zone still capped. Plus 10 to Stanag and Menkar. This ain't looking good for the boys in red. Um, there we go, the smoke and go. Uh, but they need a CV for this, so they buy a tank one. They've only got four minutes to turn this around. CV in here. It looks like the Vashuts and lost to the SAS, so that was on me. That was a bit silly of me. Um, and that Rover's actually left the zone because it's going for here. KDA Fura here. There are some trees. There are some trees here as well. Um, plus six for the guys in blue buys red a little bit more time, but it's still seven minutes till the game ends. Mankar's got a Mankar's got an airborne leader here, which he's probably going to try and send round to here. So we'll keep an eye out on that. And by that, I mean I'll completely miss it. Over here, Red's just having a really tough time clearing out this infantry to get in this zone because it's all over the place and they can't really see it. The Lynx rockets are going to take out that Vax shots and Alpha Jet cluster there. You don't see that a lot. And the TAEBV is actually driving into it, but it gets taken out by the mall which gets hit by the Roland and uh, command zone lost so now it's only plus two for Stanag and Menkar but here comes the Iltis and those rockets have actually used all their rockets and this guy's fine so uh, I guess they're not as powerful as people seem to think they are over here NATO boy uh, sorry NBK has managed to uh, take all this um, but yeah, Menkar is going to get back in that zone. Need a bomber for that, really, because it looks like he's going to be stood in the open. The anti-helo uh, helicopters are taking names there. Uh, that was a pretty big kill. That's like a 110 point swing because this thing's like 60. No, that's the wrong one. Um, Rapier FSB ones purchased here. Red, they're all in the vehicles. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. If this guy was here, he'd just get four kills there. Um, and the CVs are coming in. The Lynx leader is going for this. So he's trying to use the MAG on this guy. This is a high priority target over here. Phantom F3 goes down and this guy didn't seem to kill anything. Vaxxus and go down to SAS here, which means that this guy needs to get out. That sniper will kill that. Look, they can't see it. They cannot see it. And it's still plus two to Stanag and Menka. The smoke has faded on this. They didn't queue up enough orders or it got counter-batteried or something. Um, and yeah, the uh, the plane spam from the 11E, this guy's not got any supply. These guys have 8 HP, that does 9 HE, so if he had supply, he could have potentially killed both of those, but at least one of them. CV's coming in for this zone, they will get it, and the tick has stopped. 32 minutes left in the game, 1,000 point lead for the guys in blue. But over here, uh, th there's nothing left. I mean, <laughs> the... Uh, NATO boy has beaten the NATO boys and um, yeah there's just not a whole lot left in here it looks like it's just going to be a case of walking forwards and killing everybody uh, Lynx rockets coming in the Osa is not in position this guy's not got any rounds would love to see some supply here it is another Osa purchased and yeah the Su-25 is really good at killing those except not that time and uh, all three of these will have to hit in order for him to kill that. So it's got 65% accuracy. That was pretty lucky, actually. Um, plus two for Menkar and Stanag. And that SAS has been caught in the open there. But he will kill this because these guys are in a forest. These guys are in the open and this guy isn't shooting. That's weird. I guess he needs to be, like, here. Um, that sniper did kill that thing. Napalm out. Yeah, it gets the rover. The Javelin LML can't defend that. You need ASFs up, and the ASFs are on this side. So that that takes out the plus two tick, but 1,100 points left to secure. And uh, yeah, Menkar's got a pretty good air mobiles here. Not sure where this guy's going. Okay, that is interesting. This Lynx rocket will kill this, unless the Osa gets the hit, and it does. And this deals seven damage, and Lynxes have six HP. LGBT should be coming for this. Warrior Milan cannot be intercepted by the Osa. Um, we got some CVs on the prowl here. There was a CV 
infantry over here, don't you remember? What happened to him? Did he die? Oh, no, I remember. He came over here. He came over here and started shooting people. And uh, then I guess he died. So this guy will actually take this zone because there's no counter CV in on there. The uh, the AA3 goes down. Uh, lots of... lots. Uh, there, that's the Lynx leader. There he is. So plus two for NBK and NATO boy. The SAS are down to two HP, but they've taken two squads out already. These guys are out of rockets. These things actually aren't bad against those Lynxes. Um... Yeah, down goes the CV here, so that will end the tick there. But this guy's not long for this world. These guys don't have AT. These guys aren't going to get here in time. Um, the Cub has been resupplied. The Osa has not been resupplied, but the second Osa has arrived. This MI9 is going to go for the Warrior Milans. Just close range, just unloading the pack in front of him and shooting him. Uh, and two CVs purchased for here. The Stanag one, and we just saw one from Menkar come in. Another CV on this side, just desperately trying to get in. They're going for this. They might actually get it, uh, although this will open up. I think they might. Can they see that? No, they're going for the anti-tank gun. And the AA-2s, he's actually brought both cards of the Helo Hunters because he's got the AA-3s and the AA-2s. So really interested in hunting Helos here. Alpha Jet clusters, they get the bombs off and that will kill the infantry. Uh, it will almost kill the infantry. One went down, but the other survived. So we'll be seeing him again. This peep that is so dead. <laughs> oh no! 50% accuracy not to be. Razvedka BMP2 needs to get in over there. That's been neutralized now. Ticks are down. AA2's going down to phantoms there. There can't be many phantoms left. I've seen a lot of them die. And here we go. Smoking up the middle to get a CV in the middle. This Iltis fuel rung. I don't know how long it can survive because these guys are about to take this corner. Not sure why these guys are going back there. BMD2's coming over here, which means that Red's about to secure that zone. Over here, NATO boy, with help from NBK. Uh, you see that pack gun there? Has managed to take this zone and there's no way that Stanag gets back in there. Honestly, no way. Not with TKS, even with the challenges from 2nd UK helping. Smokes out, and there's no counter CV in here, so plus 4 to NATO by uh, and NBK, and in a few seconds it'll be a plus even more than 4. Uh, <laughs> maybe even a plus 6. Uh, over here, this guy is not long for this world. As soon as these BMD2s breach this... Actually, that, that's an interesting hill. Okay, so they've actually got to get to here. Interesting. LGBT gets a bomb off. We didn't see where it went. I think it got the T-80BV. Uh, Molding MiG takes out the Gazelle Cannon. Needs to evac right, really, because of the, the Rapier FSB1s. And, uh, yeah, we see Saxon CP coming in for Juliet. And this has been such a turnaround, such a turnaround. Plus six for NBK and NATO, boy. Still all to play for, though. I mean, these Lynx rockets will clean up some of that, but we got two CVs here. This guy's going to go across there and die because this thing's going to kill him uh, if the BMD-2s don't get him first. Auto cannons do shred helicopters, and we're just really seeing the weakness of 2nd UK here. These should cost five points. And uh, over here, the, the, the AA is just constantly killing the helicopters one at a time, one at a time. Really interesting interesting decision to go Berlin Gropers. I wonder if we can get a post-match interview from NBK after this. Um, I'll have to ask him. And this CV did get in. It's defended by Vashus, and this guy's out of rockets, so he can't do anything. And uh, that puts them on a plus eight. Five minutes till victory. And Blue are just running out of stuff. Like, this guy's about to get spotted. That's only got the MAG. It's dead because it was on the ground, so the RPG hit it. And the CV over here is dead. Died to another round of Napalm. And, uh, yeah, this guy is not long for this world. This guy lands in front of the FSB-1. Talk about, um, uh, BMing. Green Beret's leader did actually get in, so I was wrong about that. But when you clump these guys up like this, you see that one shot damaged both units, which means that that shot will kill that unit, although it would have done anyway. Six H- No, actually, no, it wouldn't, because this does seven HE. And those have 8 HP. So if he hadn't clumped those up, that one wouldn't have died. This <laughs> He takes off! And this only had one round left in it. And now he's going for uh, he's going for Papa, but even though he's already in Papa... Oh, I see. These are different players. So th that's just a bit of miscommunication there. But this Iltis Furung has been spotted there. This CV had to get out of that zone, as we spoke about. This guy's going for the CV. No, he wasn't. He was going for the Gazelle Cannon. Iltis Furung goes down to uh, Motorized Razvedka there. This guy's going to run into 
into the Challenger too. This guy's going to run into that CV. All the enemy CVs are painted, plus 16 for red. This guy's been pushed out of the zone. No way he can get back in against those guys. Mochlitzen, really powerful squad, and there's two of them. And uh, this is just a total rout. What does that say? What does that say? Somebody translate that for me. Um, might have to get some Yandex. Hippie, you're the best. Oh, thank you. Um, we'll do a we'll do a quick screen grab of that and translate that later. If nobody else wants to tell me. Uh, I was quite surprised by the decision to send the MIA over here. He's doing all right there. Uh, but with a plus 14 on the board, I mean, Blue's literally just got nothing left. There's, um, they're just sort of spamming Jaeger, trying to get back in here. They're not getting back in here. I mean, you saw he got the leader and it was immediately pushed out. This guy's on low cohesion, which means he's got like one ROF. Down he goes to the BMD2. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of AA over here. <laughs> uh, most of Stanag's air tab is just gone. Two Osas, two Cubs. T80BV rolling over here. The Razvedka BMP2 forced this guy to get picked up, but where are they going to put him? 30 seconds till victory. This game is over. This guy might go down, though, and the Lynx Rockets, assisted by the motorized airmobile, get him. Uh, but there's another push here with the T55As, and you've got, you've got Vax Schutzen and Mott Schutzen coming across here. This guy's going to find that CV, but there's like three CVs in here with a fourth on the way. This guy's trying to get round to Juliet, but there's eight seconds left, and that is game. So, really interesting game, actually. And uh, and your winners for the DEFCON 2 2v2 tournament are NBK on Berlin Gropers. The worst division in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was really interesting. <laughs> you, see, you see the power of the, the Gropening. Um, really interesting game. I want to... Actually, no, that wasn't him. Uh, he fed the whole game. NATO boy carried hard two to one. <laughs> <laughs> crazy game. Absolutely crazy game. I'm going to see if we can get NBK in for an interview. Just uh, do some DMing here. Don't want to leak the DMs. Uh... Every time you dog on a div, they win. What do you mean? I said second UK weakest div. All right, we're we're bringing NBK in here. Oh, hello. Hello, hello, NBK. Uh, congratulations on your victory. Um, I'd like to know. My first question is, uh, you know, yeah. how are you feeling? How are you feeling after winning that game? Uh, it just went as we planned, so nothing special, I guess. So you plan to play uh, Berlin Gropers? Yes, on that yes, game? exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, what what do you think the advantages of the division are? Uh, the cheap, good infantry, like the Wachschutzen, they are melting any NATO infantry just because of the cost efficiency. Like even if you are taking like French Paras division, you are still have your legion is like at seventy PTS, and your yeah. Wachschutzen are just forty five. And plus, uh, a lot of people underestimate KPVT spam because it's uh, like when you play against light skinned NATO divs, they don't have IFVs, they don't have APCs. Yeah. That's all actually a problem of some uh, like eighth division, for example, eighth infantry. It doesn't have any APVs. That's why it can't like uh, melt uh, packed infantry. And also the reason was the drones, like the MiG 21s, yeah. uh, to counter the helo, the possible helo rush from uh, second UK. And the AT guns are uh, just uh, most useful in field. Like when they're playing war game, I'm just playing Steel Division Two, and I'm fine with it. Yeah, fair enough. Would you like to elaborate on that? What, what do you mean by uh, playing Steel Division Two against war game? AT guns, AT guns. It's just oh, AT I see. Guns. There's no AT guns in war game. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, congratulations on your on your victory. I mean, we certainly saw what you were talking about with the MiG twenty one Bisons, the helicopter hunters. You got a lot of helicopters with that. At one point in the game, uh, Menkar and Stanag were on a plus 12. Were you worried? No. You were just not planet. worried. Like, when we were up, like, I want to say, uh, special thanks to Marcus and Homelander and Eric. Uh, those three players were training us all the way of tourney. And all that, uh, like, moments with NATO getting plus 15 was just usual in every game. Like, you can't play another way for Pact. It's, NATO will just anyway get that like thousand of points advantage. It's just uh, like usual. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so, so you've been practicing a lot for this tournament, then I take it. I mean, uh, I know about the games with Homelander 
Uh, uh, man, in time it was 50 hours for past two weeks. All right, okay. Then. <laughs> so yep. yeah, a lot of preparation work, a lot of preparation work. So you, you're the proud recipient of um, an amount of money. I can't remember how much. Uh, have you got uh, any plans 300 on bucks. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, is that 300 each or 300 in each total? one each 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 so what are you each what are you going to spend it on you got any you got any plans on how uh, to spend uh, well, it well i were planning to upgrade my computer because i really wanted to play broken arrow and people who watch me are uh, also like hyped for me playing broken arrow so those money will just go on upgrading the, my computer great fantastic fantastic well well done um i'll let you have a, a much deserved rest and uh, gg i'll see you around yeah, thank you. So there you go. That was the winner of the DEFCON 2 2v2 uh, Open Tournament. And uh, I'd like to thank you all, uh, all the participants, all the players. Shout out to all the War Yes guys who organized it. Keep in mind, they don't get any money from this. The money all goes to... Whoops. Uh, the money all goes to the, uh, the you know, the, the winners. Uh, so you know you, you got you got Lathans, you got Nalid, you've got Tukan, I believe uh, we got Fart Jenkins as well, uh, Bulba, Tally. Am I missing anybody? Um, if I'm missing anybody, let me know. Wooden box, wooden box, of course. How could I forget wooden box? And uh, yeah, just really really tight game from those guys. Like they said, they've done a lot of practice. They've been practicing with really good players. Um, they practice with Homelander. I believe he calls himself Yamato now. He's rank uh, 30th. It was a lot higher before, but because everybody's playing 82nd, uh, you know. And and you see that, you know, NBK, he's like, um, uh, he's like ranked, like he was 155. Like he's really not that highly ranked. Uh, he's he's ranked one higher than my wife. <laughs> what are the chances of that? <laughs> um, and so, you know, he's not played that many ranked games. He's played 18 ranked games this season, but he hasn't lost a single one. And he hasn't been just spamming 82nd. And, uh, and yeah, so it was just all about the practice, all about the practice there. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank the organizers, thank the players. Uh, let's go through the bracket. I wish I'd had more time to put together some, like, um, you know, like a like a final gameplay thing where it covers all the games, like, with little bits and stuff like that. And there you go. It's, uh, it's 2-0 to Spartan System. Um, and they're, they're your winners. In terms of the third place game, I don't know anything about that. I don't know when it's happening. I don't know who's involved. I know literally nothing about the battle for third place. I refuse to talk about it. It was actually my little brother playing. Uh, it was actually, you know, it was really sunny outside. He's actually only got one hand. Um, and, uh, and you know, the, the, the electricity wasn't working properly. The, the cat ran 